It's time to start planting some things in our log raised bed. There are some cold hardy crops that we can start planting today when it's uh, about end of April. We are not past yet the last frost date. We are in Vermont, which is a uh, zone 4B. So I'm trying out square foot gardening method. And here I have transplanted um, cauliflower. So this I bought at the nursery. This also I bought at the nursery and this is bunching onions for some uh, green onions to add in salads, which I'm very excited about. And then I will add three kale. Matt built me this jig for square foot gardening. So this is one square foot uh, large uh, piece of uh, plywood with holes drilled in a pattern with either one plant, four, nine, or 16 plants per square foot. Make holes with this uh, dowel here, but also I can mark just place where um, the plants would go. So that's what I'm going to do right now with kale transplants from the nursery. I'm using an app called Planter where I'm planning out my square foot garden. So I can lay out different plants on uh, my, in my case, it's four by eight grid and see how, when, how much space each plant needs. And also it denotes whether um, plants are companion plants or they don't like being uh, next to each other. I also take into account where the south of the bed is and then I can put uh, plants that grow taller, like for example, tomatoes on the northern side and shorter plants on the south side. So I can play around with it. And then when it comes planting time, I know exactly where to plant something. I'm just going to have one kale plant per square foot. So I'm just gonna mark kind of location for it. And I'll have three of them. The kale plants at the nursery only came in a pack of four, but I only want to plant three plants at the raised bed because I want to leave space to try out some other vegetables. So I will plant a leftover kale plant and actually have a leftover uh, cauliflower plant in uh, this pot here where the raspberry transplants came in. I filled the pot about halfway through with last year's wood chips because I don't think these plants need that much of uh, potting soil on top. This is cauliflower. We'll see how the cauliflower does here, um, if it grows too large, I might have to take out the kale, but um, no worries, I'll have three more kale plants. We'll see how well they grow and whether that's a good amount of kale for two of us to eat over summer or that's too much. Matt probably would think that's too much, but I think that might not be enough. Hmm. 
Next up, I'll sow some spinach and actually I'll do one square foot even though I want to put three square feet in my garden um, because the seed packet says to sow every seven days for continual harvest. So I'll try that. The spinach, I will plant nine plants per square foot. I'm using high mowing organic seeds for regiment spinach. Very interesting seeds. I've never seen this kind of bright white seeds. Next up, I'll seed one square foot of arugula, which is going to be nine plants. Arugula will go here because I have one, two, three spaces left for spinach. Next up, we got carrots. And carrot, we will do 16 holes. Next up I have snappies and uh, I think these will, I will do nine plants per square foot. Seed planting depth is one to two inches and Matt uh, put markings. So this is one inch and this is two inches. So this is my garden bed so far. We have some snappies, carrots, arugula, three kale plants, bunching onions, uh, aka green onions or scallions, a cauliflower plant, and spinach. So this is it for now. Now I need to wait until my seedlings that I started indoors grow large enough to be transplanted. And I also need to wait until the last frost date so that I can sow some other things. Now, just to top it off, I'll put some wood chips all around the raised bed as a walking path. And voila, we have wood chips all around the raised bed. I just thought this would be a nice surface to walk on, to look prettier and uh, would be less muddy. I thought I would give you a quick garden update. So these raspberries here have five plants. These are the first things that I transplanted. And look at that, they have like small leaves are coming out. Coming out on two. Mm -hmm. Third one, I don't see any, looks pretty dead. Uh, fourth one has lots of growth coming out. And the fifth one looks pretty dead. Well, three out of five showing signs of growth. That's great. Who knows, maybe the other two are later varieties, maybe they come later, I'll hope for that, and I hope they're not dead. And here's how our seedlings are doing. So chives have germinated, growth coming out. Basil is over here and here, and definitely has germinated as well. Dill is doing pretty good. And the bell pepper is not coming out yet. Check out this patch of green. This is the first green that I've seen on our property this spring. And these apparently are wild leeks also called ramps. They are edible and uh, can be a great addition to salad or apparently you could also make ramp or wild leek pesto. For bird sap we had a good run. Uh, it was running about a week and then it is starting to change the taste uh, I think because the buds were starting to sprout. I think we could have um, tapped the birch tree 
sooner or earlier to get the longer run. But each day it produced about 70, 75 ounces of sap. So that was quite a lot from a single tree, more than the, any of the two maple trees produced. I'm glad I tried birch tapping and uh, it definitely brought me memories from my family tapping birch trees back at home in Latvia. It's about mid-May and I will show you how our garden bed is doing. So we have peas here that have germinated, carrots have germinated as well, and radishes have germinated, and arugula, and spinach looks pretty good. This is uh, um, cabbage, green onions, and three kale plants. Today I went to the nursery and bought three tomato plants, and those are going to transplant today. I got three varieties here. I got uh, cherry tomato and a uh, Roma tomato and an early girl. I'll also plant a few marigold plants because they're pretty and supposedly they're a good companion plant because they prevent some of the pests and attract some of the good pollinators. The garden is looking well and we have cabbage that has germinated now and the second square foot of spinach is starting to germinate here. We're now past the last frost date for by a week or so and uh, today I'm going to transplant a pepper plant. My bell pepper seedling that I uh, saw indoors uh, is just I think too small. I planted or I seeded it um, way later than I think you're supposed to. So I don't think it has grown large enough that it will grow fast enough during the season to uh, bear fruit in the short season that we have here in Vermont. So at the nursery, I bought uh, a bell pepper plant. And this is a purple beauty, sweet bell pepper. And I will plant that today. It is going to go here in this square foot. It is almost end of May and I have finished seeding and planting the raised garden bed. Today, the last thing that I did, I put cucumber over here and over here. And otherwise the plants are doing pretty well. The peas are doing great. This was the transplant from the nursery uh, bell pepper plant. It's also doing well. The tomato plants have grown well. The kale is doing really well. The radishes and arugula are kind of falling like sideways. I'm not sure what's the reason for that. Um, the same with the spinach. And I have zucchini and spaghetti squash finally have germinated as well. I also have something here that has germinated, which looks very much like um, kind of zucchini or spaghetti squash. And for a while I thought that maybe the seed that was there, maybe by squirrels or something else, got transported here, but now that spaghetti squash also has come out, now I'm not sure what it is. Also, you maybe can see this netting. So this is deer netting that um, I added. Matt built these stands and this is kind of the 
temporary height before I put trellises for tomatoes, peas, and uh, cucumbers. So this will last for a while until the tomatoes get taller. So apparently how this deer netting works is that the deer don't like eating something and something that they can't see touching their noses. So they will uh, stay away from that. So I hope that's the case and this works. And when we have taller trellises, then we'll put deer netting over that. So far it's doing great. And soon we'll be able to harvest some kale and green onions. Now I'm by the RV and let me give you a tour of our herb garden. So this is the herb planter that Matt built. And then I transplanted out two basil plants from uh, my seedlings that I started in the RV. The other two are kind of too small. And then uh, three out of four dill survived that I sowed, so I transplanted it here. And then I have a cilantro and parsley here and it hasn't germinated yet. And then I've got the rosemary plant from a nursery. And I grew these chives from seed uh, in the RV and transplanted them here and they're doing well. We also got a lavender plant from a nursery. Here I tried to take some blueberry cuttings, but they're not looking so well. So we'll see whether anything comes out of this or not. Here and over here I have uh, two marigold plants uh, from the nursery. They came in a pack of six. So I have four in the garden bed and I have two remaining ones. So I put them here. Um, here's a kale plant that was in the pack of four, so the other three are up in the raised garden bed. And this one is so much smaller than the other four. Um, also, the cauliflower plant also was in the same pack from the nursery, and this one is also much smaller than the one in the raised garden bed. And last but not least, uh, Matt built another planter because I wanted to have some strawberries. and. Um, this is from our own number and then the bottom we had some leftover hemlock boards so bottom is from hemlock and this is uh, spruce or pine and these are three strawberry plants from nursery they already have uh, flowers on some of them came like that from the nursery so i'm hoping we'll get a few strawberries this year for this planter we decided to try it out to paint it with a natural vermont coatings uh, stain for outdoors and here's a row of raspberries and four of them are doing really well. And then the middle one didn't bud at all. So we had a neighbor who was digging out their raspberries and we got one from them, but it looks like it's not gonna survive. But I'm sure eventually this will fill out anyways, because these are doing great. And they're even starting to get buds. So this was our progress uh, to our garden so far. And so far it looks good and I'm excited to see how it develops over the summer. If this is your first time here, please consider subscribing to follow along our journey of starting a homestead and building a house in Vermont.